Hello everybody, Father Bill here, and I just wanted to give you an update on some news that, it ha that has happened. Uh, and I just got this off of the Catholic Sentinel website. Uh, and it basically the Catholic Sentinel itself and the Sentinella, the Spanish edition of the Sentinel, is going to be uh, closing their publication on October, on October 1st, reflecting the transition in Catholic communications, according to a press release that was just released today. Uh, this is, I'm recording this on July 21st, so instead of a Friday, I'm, I'm recording this on a Thursday. It's just because it's uh, important for us to know. Let me, I want to read some more from the article. This is from the Catholic Sentinel. You can go to sentinel.org and uh, read more on your own, but I'm just going to read this to you and then we'll go from there. It says, the Vatican uh, began reforming their communication strategy in 2017, focusing on evangelization through a strongly digital presence. The pandemic only accelerated these changes as the faithful quickly learned to access church services online. Digital media can reach more people at a lower cost than traditional print media, and the release said, uh, and this is a quote from Archbishop, he says, The Catholic Sentinel and Sentinella, Sentinella have, been an integral, have been integral in communicating to the faithful in Western Oregon. The Archbishop explained that he hopes to continue to offer an outlet for local Catholic news. He said the focus uh, on so the focus going forward will be more on evangelization and outreach and less on cla classic journalism. And then basically, like, what's the latest news in the Catholic Church? There's other ways to do that. The Archbishop has begun producing social media videos aimed at people on the fence of faith. Those videos can be found on the Archdiocese website. You can go to archdpdx.org, along with news announcements and upcoming events and statements and other communications. So it sounds like, again, with this closing down, the the website, Archd, Archdpdx, the Archdiocese website, is going to be needing a little bit more um, insert of news events and other kind of things going on. So I'm going to guess that's what we'll probably see. Uh, that means, of course, the, after October, there will not be any sentinels available to people in the church, nor will you be able to subscribe to it. Um, here locally, we're just, this is kind of just thinking about these things. You know, our own website uh, has basic information. It's like having a, a static uh, bulletin of sorts. Uh, but I think that we will start looking at other ways to uh, beef that up and also just have another uh, extended web presence. And, and this is one of them right here. We, uh, Of course, this is on the shoulders of Father Dave choosing to have multiple videos during the week. In my previous parish, we did the same thing, but it's been continuing here at Holy Trinity, and I think that's a great way to, to do things. It allows us to communicate to you in a way that print media does not. Uh, Pope John Paul II, when he spoke about the new evangelization, he spoke about a new ardor and new media, and the new ardor it can be done in print, uh, but the media itself, books, um, you know, newsprint, and even in some ways, CDs uh, are not the new media. New media might be things like a book on tape, or in this case, a video, or uh, websites that are, have like more social interaction. And I'm hoping, you know, we're going to start looking at that. I ask you to pray for us. We'll continue, of course, doing our bulletin. But maybe if you're going out uh, on vacation and going to be uh, other places where there's other parishes, I would love to see what those bulletins look like so that we can kind of relook at our bulletin. What could we do to do something new, maybe uh, maybe change something, delete something, whatever it might be. But it's helpful to see those. So when you go on vacation, and of course you go to Mass, right? Of course you do. Uh, pick up a bulletin and bring it back to the parish. Give it to Erica, and she can look at that, and we'll kind of peruse ideas uh, and beg, borrow, steal, whatever we can, with brilliance of other parishes. But also pray for us as we want to do some more in the area of a new media presence as well. And this is a great start, this kind of thing. Now, I do want to encourage you, as you do watch this, to make comments. So this is on Facebook, but it's really the source is, is YouTube. To consider on the Facebook, the Facebook, um, to write comments. Uh, I'm going to do my best to to watch our Facebook presence and make comments and communicate with people. I've been overwhelmed by how many people are emailing me. That's wonderful, and that makes it really simple for me to communicate back to you. Uh, in a timely manner. Uh, I know that in some of the gatherings I've had with priests in our uh, country through Amazing Parish, uh, we had what was called boot camp. And in this boot camp, we had challenges that we had for us. And one of those challenges that a couple of priests, uh, priests in this group decided to do, that they would get back to their, their parishioners. Uh, so if a phone call came back, they do it in a timely manner. 
One said, yeah, within three weeks. I'm like, within three weeks? Ah, um, how about like three minutes, uh, if that's possible, or within the end of the day, uh, something like that. And when it is a like uh, a email, that is something that I know that I can do that much easier. Uh, so my email is Father Bill F R B I L L at h dash t dot org, and you can email me that way. Um, but you can also uh, snail mail still works, you know. Um, and cards still work. I'm writing cards to you know thank parishioners. That's uh, another way to do it as well. But uh, consider you know doing things that are uh, more efficient, quicker, um, that allows, you know, communication to increase. And I've noticed that when there is a lack of communication, there's a void there and it gets filled with other narratives, right? And some of that becomes problematic because people start believing or the negative stuff comes in. That's not even true. So be mindful of that. So that's, that's number one. I want to let you know the Catholic Sentinel is going to be shutting down and that I see as a challenge for us at Holy Trinity here to kind of up our game uh, on either social media or other ways to interact with you and other people. Secondly, which is also related to technology, is uh, is to be aware when you are online or you get an email, but more like the email and possibly even a text from someone you know, but they're vague, like people have you know, impersonated me in this way. They would say something like, hey, I need your help. Can you contact me? And if you try to do it by phone, they'll always say, no, I'm not available somehow. It has to be by only email or texting. That way they don't have to reveal anything about who they are because you would know just by them speaking that it's not this person. Uh, So know that people, uh, when they're vague like that, to be suspicious, especially if it's from me or any of our staff, we would never do that. In fact, no church would do that. They're not going to go out and say, hey, I need your help. Can you contact me soon? And then what they're basically going to end up trying to do is get you to give them either money or things like uh, iTunes cards or Google Play cards or you're like, what are those? They're basically like, uh, a, not a credit card, but it's a card that has a balance like, um, like a gift card. And you might think, well, what are they going to do with a gift card? What they're going to do is if you buy these, and they usually want large numbers, and it'll be like, give me, you know, 30, uh, $50 gift cards and whatever. What they're going to want you to do is scratch them up and then either take pictures of the back of those cards with the codes or email them back to them. And in a sense, then what they do is they're stealing the money off that card. They publish that on a black, the black web, the part of the internet, uh, where they sell these off. So like a $50 card, they're going to sell the information for like $30 or $20, right? Half off. Well, see, they paid nothing right but now they're about to make 25 or 30 dollars but we or you uh, if we buy these cards we've paid the full amount and we've lost it it's not going to go where it needs to go so please be very mindful of these things they're called phishing attacks or phishing attempts and it's not with an f-i-s-h it's p-h-i etc phishing and it's a way for people and it could be done by bots i mean a a computer like a, a robot on the internet, scanning websites. And they can happen on us. That's where I think uh, what's happened here at Holy Trinity since I arrived, because it didn't take long after I arrived, that people are getting an email or a text from me asking some big, uh, you know, hope for help. And some people have bid on it, but luckily they contacted us or said, no thanks. Uh, they, they've sent us. Our parish is pretty high tech, which is pretty, pretty great. But, they only need to have one person that gets fooled. They can send it out to hundreds of people and only needs one person and they've made money. So that's, you know, and they scan our websites. They scan the bulletin that's on our website. Uh, if there's a phone number, that means they can text. And if, if it's your home number, not likely, but uh, if it's a cell number, and that's really common, cell phones have the ability to do texting. And so they will text you and say, hey, I need your help. Uh, get back to me as soon as you can via text. I'm out of the office or something like that. And uh, now I'm a little bit of a kind of a strange fellow. I like to toy with them. I go, oh, really? What's going on? Tell me more. Or in fact, one hacked actually truly did hack Bishop Steiner's uh, MSN account. And it was an email back and forth. So I started emailing saying, well, you know, um, I'd be happy to help you. Um, what do you need? And of course, it's these Google Play cards or whatever, you know, iTunes cards. I go, well, you know, actually, you know what would be better? How about I just send you money? 
what, you, know, you live just down the street from me and I can give that to your mom. In fact, I can give it to my mom to your mom. Now, by the way, Bishop Steiner does not live near me at the time and nor is his mom or my mom alive. But they don't know that, so they go, okay, that'd be great. Or they don't say much, or and I'll just keep going. I'll keep baiting them back. Say, well, I dropped the money. In fact, instead of just the cards, I gave you money. I put it on their doorstep, um, and it's gone. And they go, well, I was out of town. So well, I'll do it again, and I know I'll give it to your mom personally, and which causes this whole thing to crumble, right? Because they don't want any kind of accountability. This makes them accountable. Or... I call this the familiarity approach. I use my supposable familiarity with this hacker who's posing as somebody else to do what would seem reasonable, but I'm not. I'm not telling them the truth. Uh, and if they go along with it, it just continues to demonstrate uh, this is not the person at all. And what I ended up doing with Bishop Steiner is I actually called him myself. And he just said, yeah, you know, actually I did get hacked. Someone, someone well, got my uh, email. And I was watching the emails going back and forth, which that's a classic example uh, that he was truly hacked. But this is a really uncommon. What's more common is somebody's going to have an email that is not at all the same email. So always look at the email address or the phone number. If they're texting, they look at the phone number, the origin of this person. Is this the number that you know? And if it isn't, then you know this is a hacker. Right, And I would encourage you to call the person of the number you know separately. Do not respond to it. Call your friend and say, hey, did you, whatever, send me a text. They're like, no. And now you really know. And again, I'd ultimately just not. I'd, I'd block them or don't respond to them. But this is some advice, a little priestly techie advice uh, from Father Geek. Um, but this is stuff to know about, though. I pray for uh, the evangelization, first of all, of uh, our community here and Holy Trinity and the work that the Catholic Sentinel has done. Pray for the Archdiocese and their continuing seeking out the ability to go to the edges and help people. We are all in this together. We're going to start thinking about this here. What can we do? How can we expand? How can we think more um, uh, forward thinking to interact more with people to spread the gospel, to tell them what an amazing thing. We have the best product in the world if you left to look at that we have the greatest news that's ever been and we need to get that out to not just people that read you know papers and newspapers but the people that are out there you know one of the great things we have here at holy trinity if you just drive by is that reader sign out there right it's amazing it's beautiful it's wonderful and that may not be attractive to let's say the, the catholic in the pew but it's not for the catholic in the pew that we have that it's for people driving by. And I, I've been with my sisters driving by, and then they go to church, but they, they, they are attractive. They read the sign. And it's nice. Sometimes it's just a kind of a quip, uh, uh, something a little, you know, humorous. Other times it's something kind of lifting up. Um, I think it's a, it's an unusual thing for a Catholic church to do, but you know, we're just trying to think, uh, how can we help people and do things in ways that are unique? Again, I'm Father Bill Holsinger. God bless you. Uh, feel free to make send, put comments in the comment section. I'll do my best to connect with you on that or uh, other parts or other members of our staff. And I hope we'll see you this weekend. I think Deacon Brett, in fact, I know Deacon Brett is preaching uh, this weekend. And uh, I look forward to listening to him share the word from his heart and some of his stories. God bless you all.